Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You know, they, they sung a song just a minute ago about God's love. God loves us. I've been teaching now in the uh, YMC over a year. And I started out teaching love, teaching about love, teaching about God the Almighty, who is love. And, you know, I've been quite surprised at what God will show you. He will get you information. You may see what I'm talking about tonight, about love. Uh... I think that we don't have a comprehension of God's love. I want you to think about this now. Your enemies, God wants you to love them. He tells you to do good for your enemies. He tells you to pray for your enemies. Now, you know, we've got enemies in the earth. And they're out to kill, steal, and destroy. What does that sound like? But God said to love those people. And I... I would say this, you're going to have to use faith. <laughs> yeah. The God kind of faith. Now we know that we all got a measure of God's faith when we got born again. And I believe the, the walk of love will be an experience that you're learning yeah. as long as you're on the earth. Amen. I really do. I believe it, because you're going to have challenges every day of your life. One kind or another. If it's just somebody cutting you off on, in the highways. There is a devil that's arrayed against goodness but we know that but Jesus the most perfect being that's ever stepped foot on the earth the devil was arrayed against him so we're going to get in the word tonight and and we're going to talk about the key to the revelation that opens a door to the highest kind of love. Now I've taught this, uh, I haven't taught this here in this church, but I've taught this, this several times elsewhere. And the more I dive into this, the more I find out that I missed. There's, it just, you know, the Lord will show you something else, somewhere else. I mean, even in the Old Testament, you'll find, you'll find so many places uh, that God so loved these people that he did extreme things. To keep them in line with his desires. Now the first uh, 
scripture I'd like to go to is John 15. The Gospel of John 15. And John 15, 8 through 13. 8 through 13. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I love you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than a man lay down his life for his friends. Now pay attention what, what he's talking about. You've got to lay down your life. Now, you know... Uh, we probably all would like to went to the car race. You know, that'd been a really neat thing to do, you know, go down to Darlington and, and watch the car race. I particularly wouldn't like it. Too much noise. But I'd rather preach than I had to go to Darlington. I'd rather go to the mall and, and talk to people and hand out tracts. But there's a reason for that. I know that when you retire, you're, you're in a better place to do these things than you are when you're working a full-time job and, and keeping a full-time house up. I understand that. I really do. But God has, has enabled us who retire to do these things. Okay, he talks about that you bear much fruit. Now, bearing much fruit does not always mean going to the mall. You could bear much fruit in praying for the country. You could bear much fruit in praying for the church. So there... There's different kinds of fruits that, that we could bear much of. And I want to go to, let me see. I think it'd be, I got it written down in here, so I'm going to have to find it in here. Okay. John, 1 John 4.16. 1 John 4.16. And we have known and believed the love of God that he hath to us God is love. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of the judgment because he is as he is so are we in the world. Pay attention to what he said in this, this one uh, verse. Herein 
is our love made perfect. We're going we're gonna to be talking about perfect love. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians. The 13th chapter. Now, this, enti this entire chapter is about one thing. Giving selfless love is the subject of the entire chapter. I'm going to read the, I'm going to start off at uh, verse 1 and read the entire chapter. Though I speak with tongues and of men and of angels and have not love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and have not love, I am nothing. That's a big statement. If you really get to thinking about God and why God is so perfect, you'll have to come up with because of his love. Now, I know there's tender mercies in there too, but the tender mercies come out of love. I know there's kindness in God, but His kindness comes out of His love. The perfection of God is His love. He is love. And we know that. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. So all these things you do outside of love are dead seeds. They're seeds that have no life in them. So it it would behoove us to know that to plant good seeds, we have to plant them in love. You can't do it in anger. And though I bestow all my goods... Oh, I got that one, I'm sorry. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaulteth not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. You know, love, just, just staying in love is a pretty hard thing to do. If you really get down to it, it's, it's really hard to do. And, and we can't do it without the Spirit of God. We cannot do it. It takes the Spirit of God in us to bring these things about. Think about it. You know, the more I walk with God, the more I know I depend on Him for every single thing in my life. See, when you're a young Christian, you don't see that. But the more you, you live and walk with him, uh, it's just like this afternoon, I have to have his anointing to teach. I have to have it. But I have to teach in love. <laughs> I'm going to get that in there too. <laughs> Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. But where there be prophecies, 
they shall fail outside of love. Where there is tongues, they shall cease outside of love. Where there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I think I've told this before. I had a friend who stayed in the Bible a lot. And, and, and I, I knew him for years. And then he got where he wasn't reading the Bible as much. But while he was reading the Bible, you could ask him any question, and he could tell you where it's at, just like that. But it only took him a few months not being in the Bible. He couldn't tell you where hardly anything was at. That word's alive. It's not going to stay with you because it's alive. That's why you have to stay in that word. And knowledge will uh, vanish away outside of love. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, outside of love. But when that which is perfect is come, when love is come, this changes the whole picture now. When that which is perfect is come, That which is in part is shall be done away with. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass darkly outside of love. But then face to face, now I know in part, but then I know even as I am known. You know when you're not walking in love. That's not in part. You know. But everybody else around you knows too. So you know what they know when you're not walking in love. Well, if the people around you know that you're not walking in love, how much easier it is for God to know you're not walking in love. And now about a faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love, out of all the things that, that we could do for God, would be the greatest. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And we know that he had a love commandment. Praise God. Now we're going to talk about laying down our life. Um, Matthew sixteen twenty four. Matthew. I've got a new Bible. It'll take me a little bit. You guys, bear with me, please. The pages want to stick together. 1624. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hebrews 
Hebrews seven twenty five. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost to come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. What's Jesus doing? Jesus is laying down his life for them. Ever, ever laying his life. We know that he laid his life down on the cross. We know that. But this is a different life now. He laid down his life for his friends. We're his friends. If you keep the commandments. Praise God. Ephesians 4.16 Thank you. Thank you, Father. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supply according to the effects of work in working in the measure of every part maketh the increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, every one of us has a part to play. You know, we're appointed even by the pastor, you know, some of us are appointed for particular places in the church. See, and, and, and the usher, that joint, supplies part of the need for the body. Then you got the worship leaders, different anointing, different place, but that's very necessary. That supplies another joint to the body. And the, the reason for that is if everybody does their job and does it in love, then they're doing what God's called them to do. And I would say this, uh, you know, sometimes you hear grumbling. I don't hear it in this church now. I'm going to tell you that straight up. But you hear grumbling in the church. Um, back, it had been years ago, we had some people um, who received the Holy Ghost and, and one woman couldn't receive it because she was angry because her money went somewhere else other than where she thought it ought to go. And, and we had a hard time with her. Getting the other people in the place we needed to get them, she just was upset and she wanted to air her, her thoughts. That schism in the body. And there's no place for it. And we hope that they are, these same people will uh, come to a maturity and, and understand that they gave that money to Jesus. They didn't give it to the pastor. Acts 2, please. Let's go to Acts 2. and 
and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Pay attention to what he said though. On my servants. Now we have a servitude to Jesus because he's, he's our king. Of course, now when we serve Jesus in our positions, we're also serving the Father God also. But we don't, what you say, serve the Father because we're children of, of the Father. Our servitude is to Jesus. And if, if you re dig deep into this, if you don't understand, dig a little bit deeper and you'll see what, I, what I'm talking about. But our servitude is, is to him and his words now. Okay. This light appears, you have to turn your, <laughs> your uh, paper a little uh, one way. Ephesians uh, 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. And 32. Ephesians 4 and 32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sakes hath forgiven us. I think one of the, the biggest holdbacks that we have in the church is unforgiveness. Now, I'm out and about a whole lot. And I talk to a lot of people. And I, in talking to them, I find out a lot of these people got grudges against other people. And they make it known. They're mad at somebody. Well, when I find out that, I don't even ask the Lord to heal them. I'll talk to them about their not walking in love and they need to forgive that person. It's a biggie with God. Forgiveness is a biggie. And here's why. If you can't do what you want God to do, why would He do it? You want Him to forgive your sickness or your disease, And if you won't forgive your brother, and a lot of times these people don't even know why. They're mad at each other. You'll find that so many times. Well, I've just, it's just been this way for years. And they don't even know what it's about. <laughs> that kind of silly, isn't it? <laughs> okay, Ephesians 5.2. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Somewhere in our lives there's going to be a time when we need a favor from God, you can bank on it. Well, <laughs> if you're having a hard time getting healed and you know you've got a fault against 
your brother, then you've got to get rid of that. Why not just wipe the slate clean to start with and not have that problem following you around? See, that thought, that, there's people who have left this, this church, and I know for a fact they weren't supposed to leave. They had problems. A lot of them were, they listened to the devil. I understand that. But if they got the problem here, they're going to take it over there, and they got the same problem. The problem a lot of times is obedience. You have to be obedient to the Word of God. Jesus said that. If you love me, keep my commandments. And these people don't want to give up their position. And it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It really does not make sense to me. You know, the older I get, I, I look at these problems people have. And I think, oh my, if they would just listen. If they would just listen to me. I could tell them how to get out of that problem. And a lot of these people that I know have been in church at one time or another, and they were doing really good, or they were raised in church, and then when they got of age, they left the church, and they've had problems ever since. I think God calls that your first love. You left your first love. I don't think you're supposed to do that at all. John 13, 34. John 13, 34. And we've heard this before. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. And by this, all men will know that you're my disciples if you have one, a love one for another. And I know there's There's uh, so much going on in the earth that it's not like it was when I was a young man. You know, it's not. Man, things have changed radically. Uh, I'm appalled at what's on television time and time again. Just, I'm talking about daylight time. Some of the stuff I see on television today, I didn't even know about till I was in my 20s. You can call me a dumb boy, but I'm just telling you that's the truth. Maybe the children didn't know everything that they need to know. They were well guarded. But to me, that's the way it ought to be. Ought to guard our children's minds. Uh, got a little granddaughter. And we'll keep her some time, and she'll turn on the television, and I'll sneak up there and I'll watch it a little bit and see if I want her to watch that. And one day, I, sure enough, I didn't like what she was watching. It was kind of cartoonish, but it wasn't what I would allow her to watch. I said, young lady, you can't watch that in my house. You need to change that channel. But my daddy lets me watch, and my mama uh, lets me watch. I said, well, I'm not your mama and I'm not your daddy. You have to change channels because I'm not going to allow you to either that or cut it off. 
and it's little cartoons coming against authority. See, they're taught with cartoons to come against authority. And it seems like the laws that, that they make now, all of them are against the Bible. Don't whip your children. Who ever heard of that? Don't whip your children. My, my, my. If mine done something that he ought to have a licking for, I'd, I'd lick him right in front of the, the judge. I'd do what God said to do about it. I want to raise him upright. I want him to know the consequences of, of not doing what he's told to do. And our law is just totally against this now. Uh, children going to court and getting a divorce from their parents. Have you ever heard such stupidity? Can you even imagine that? I'm talking about little kids. And then the mom and daddy still have to keep them up. Why wouldn't the judge have to do it? He's the one that brought the judgment. I just don't understand it. It can't get much worse, can it? <laughs> my, 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 my. Uh, Luke 6, 36. Luke 6, 36. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. I've got a scripture that tells me about my Father. He said, He delighteth in mercy. My God, my Father, He delighteth in mercy. Well, sometime I need him to delight in mercy. <laughs> you know? And we all do. Praise God. Praise God. First John 2. First John 2 and 6. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. He's talking about Jesus. Our pattern ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. What comes out of our mouth ought to be patterned after, after the Lord Jesus. As we talk to people our pattern ought to be Jesus. As we raise our children, our pattern ought to be Jesus. You know, I very seldom spank my children. I didn't have to. I really did. Uh, we took time. We spent a lot of time with our kids. You know, although we had jobs, we spent a lot of time with them. And we taught them as they were little growing up. And, and our sons and daughters done the same thing. See, it's reciprocating in, in our grandchildren. See, they saw what we did. We trained them that way. And, and now they're doing it. Okay. And we got a higher power to look at and to train our children by his ways. You know. And we have to stay in that word to get these jobs done. You can't do them outside of God. It's absolutely, totally impossible. And all you have to do is just look around what's going on in the earth right now. So many children 
have not been raised up under the admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it shows up. It shows up in their actions. It shows up in, in what comes out of their mouth. I am appalled at what I hear come out of a young girl's mouth sometimes. I hear them say things like, my goodness, where in the world did they hear that? I'm talking about young girls. If you go to the mall, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a good experience. Uh, and I'm telling you, God does marvelous works. When you take a trip like that, uh, and all you guys are welcome we usually go to the mall right up here on Tuesdays. We get there about 10 o'clock. Everything's opening by then. You say, well, there's not many people there. But there's always people who need to hear about Jesus. And God does some of the, I could say, strange things. It's kind of strange to, to our eyes. Like, for instance, one day, the people that we talked to, an Indian lady and her family. Um, the Allah people. We got to talk to a, a person there and a, a Buddhist. And it seemed like that, that, that particular day we were talking to people that come from another country. But there's something like that every time you go. It's an exciting thing for me to go up there. Uh, we've got friends that go, you know, go up there and, and we'll hand out tracts. And uh, it's an awesome experience what God does. The last time we knew, we always start on the bottom floor and come up. We usually go to the bottom floor and go up to the third floor and then come down to second because that's the floor we leave from. And that's our pattern. That's just the way we've been doing it. And we knew that we were supposed to go to the top floor. So we went to the top floor and we knew where to go on that floor. And there was uh, a group of men that had... Uh, uh, young people who were mentally incapable. And we got to pray for all of them. Laid hands on all of them. Cast out devils out of some of them. Right there in front of the... I, I don't even know whether there's a church or not. But they were taking care of these, these young people. And we asked the, the, the ones that were caretakers if we could pray for them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I said, well, ask them if it's okay if we pray for them. And yes, yes, yes. There was one guy that was making a noise, and, you, and there was no way to understand it. I know he got healed. I promise you, I know he got healed. We laid hands on him, prayed for him. And just as soon as I laid hands on him, he stopped the noise. Never heard it again while we were there. And he, he was doing it very disturbing very disturbing sound. And I said, you demon, you come out of him right now. And don't you go back. And just as soon as I laid my hands on him, he got, he, he, he was just all over, you know, his body was just moving all over. What am I saying? If you want to have some fun in God, go get you some kind of, you, you need something that's got the church address and and a website and things like that on it. Just go out in the mall. You don't have to go to this one out here. Go one next to your house. And just spend a, a couple hours or an hour. Hours wonderful. And it's exciting. It's an awesome thing to watch God do things like that. I mean, we wouldn't even have known those people who were up there except God put it in our spirit to go. God wants these people healed. The love of God. He can't help himself. God just can't help himself for wanting to see people healed. That's just who he is. I really believe that. He just cannot help himself. 
because his love constrains him in such a way that he wants to see that person raised up. But you got to have somebody on earth to do it. The church has a job outside. Outside of the church. And Miss Pastor, I, I've learned a lot here during my lifetime. I've been here 30 years, I guess. Close to it anyway. Um, Jessica, Jessica was just a little bitty thing when I came here. And I don't think uh, the other one had been born yet. So how old is she? How much? So I've been here at least 28 years. And I've learned a lot. But you can learn a lot and not do anything with it. You got to take it to the streets. You got to take it where the people are. I believe there's coming a, a move of God unprecedented by any move God has ever allowed in the history of the earth. I believe that's coming. The church needs to be preparing now. If you want to see some of the most awesome healings in the entire time of the earth, I think it's just before us. But you need to get, listen to me, front seat row. Go and get out there and get with it. Yeah. Lay hands on the sick. They will recover. Yeah. God told you that. He gave us a mandate. And it's all done in Christ Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to get happy. <laughs> I've probably gone a little over, but that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut her down right here. And uh, I thank you guys for coming out. Uh, I sure have enjoyed myself. And this is some of the teachings that I do in, in the uh, Y. And I enjoy that one too. That, that's an awesome situation there. God set that one up. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.